Hi, I'm George, welcome to GMakes, and in this tutorial we are going to learn to make this procedural rain effect like you can see right here uh, using 100% geometry nodes in Blender. Uh, so fully procedural, you can change it at any time, does not use a particle system or anything, it's real quick, real easy, uh, works very well for renders that are animated and looks pretty well for still renders as well. Uh, so let's get right into it. Um, so here I'm in Blender, I'm just going to leave this light right away. Uh, I'm going to keep the default cube. Uh, because I'm going to just go right ahead into geometry nodes. So, uh, geometry nodes, geometry node editor, new, I'll name it like rain. Because why not? Organization a little bit. Um, so rain, uh, and now, basically the, the idea of this is that we are going to take a grid. So again, we're not using any, uh, particle systems or anything like that. We're just going to use this grid. Um, and then I'm going to transform because I want to rotate it. Transform and we'll do uh, along the x-axis, so 90, there we go. Uh, and now the idea is that rain comes down from the top and goes down to the bottom, or at an angle, whatever you want to do, but it's up to down and it's a bunch of lines. That's all rain, well with motion blur, it's, it's droplets with motion blur essentially, it's lines. So, um, if we scale this up a little bit both ways, and then uh, if we go and basically using those lines, we want those lines. So we're going to get those lines by doing a mesh, again, our, our mesh grid to curve, mesh to curve right there. And there we go. Now we have a bunch of lines, um, but we only want these vertical ones. We don't want the horizontal ones in the middle. Um, so that's why this grid down here is nice because we have these vertices X, vertices Y. So if I change the Y vertices, again, we rotated this, so this this is Y up here, like the, we rotate it, it doesn't matter. Uh, but if I change that Y vertices from three to two, we lose that middle one, because now it's just counting the corners. Uh, but we want these X uh, vertices, so I can add more there. And that's that's the gist of it, we got our rain. Looky there, it's rain. Uh, almost, not quite. Um, so, but that's the idea of it, is that now we have this thing where we can completely control the size, both X and Y, the scale of it. Um, and then also the density of our rain, essentially. Um, all from this, the base grid node, really. Um, but now we want to make it look like rain. It's now, we don't just want all these lines, which are fun, but we want rain. So if I take a trim curve, and again, this is going to uh, tell it when to start and when to end. So because I want that, I'm going to grab a noise texture to get some randomness and some variety. You can mess with other textures as well, but this is the quickest, simplest, the one I like. So if we take uh, this factor, plug it into the start, there we go. It's pretty much rain right away. Uh, and that's nice, but we still got this end bit, so it doesn't look quite like rain. Um, so what we can do though is, uh, whoop, is we're going to grab an and we're going to grab a math node plug that value in and change this to uh, add work. So we're going to keep it add because we want to add some value to this base value uh, to create this end. So we have some distance there. So if we do that, you can see there we go. We get a replication and inverse essentially up there. We can mess with this number um, to kind of... Uh, and then you would mess with this number to really uh, control that. Um, you don't want big numbers there, you want small ones. So there we go, we can see we're getting that, but uh, it's 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 pretty s simple. It's pretty blah. So I want to actually grab a random value, a random value, plug that into this value. I like keeping the, the minimum at zero, but then make the max like 0 0.02 or something. Maybe not that much, maybe 0 0.05. There we go, so we get a little bit of that rain. And then you can also mess with the scale of your rain. And again, you can add more vertices, you can add less. Um, and there we go, we got a kind of the base idea of our rain. But it's not raining right now, it's just kind of streaks, streaks, just some droplets um, with fake motion blur. So uh, first things first, to make this animated, we are going to go to 40, and also if you just want to change the look of it. Um, so now we can control that. And look, it already looks like it's raining. Um, but to control that even more, we're going to grab a scene time frame into that W. So that when we hit play, I'm going to hit my space bar. Uh, it plays and it looks like rain. I like that. I think it's pretty darn sweet. It really tricks the eye. Again, no 
real motion blur in that because you just change the seed value. So it's a great uh, memory saver for your computer because you're not computing anything. You don't got to cache a system. Um, but uh, again, you can change the detail. You can change the roughness. You can even add a little distortion in there if you want. Um, so, uh, but let's say I, I like it one frame changing, but let's say I thought it was a little fast. I can take another math node, change that to divide, and then just go ahead and mess with that. And you can get some real slower. You can get some real, now it's looking a little bouncy because it's not quite as fast. Um, but I don't need that right now. I just like the, the one frame. Um, so instead, uh, I'm going to turn this now in back into a mesh so we can get the actual droplets um, that we want for the rain. So uh, we have this trim curve here, and then I'm going to take it as a as a curve to mesh now. So the inverse of what we did before to mesh, curve to mesh. Uh, we're going to add the profile curve of a curved circle, and we're going to fill those caps. But this is wacky and wild. It's much too large, so I'm going to add a set curve radius. And then also, because I want some even more variation, more randomness, I'm going to grab another random value node, plug that in, and make this something like 0 .003. Uh, I'm going to keep the minimum at 0. And again, you can change the seed value. You could also animate this, I suppose, but I think that adds a little too much flickeriness to it. But, you know, it's procedural. Do what you want. Mess with it. There's a lot of seed values here. Um, but there we go. So that's that's rain that adds a little more variation in the drop width, a little more randomness, so it looks not a hundred percent like it's a computer thing. Uh, adds a little more naturalism to it, and that's rain. Uh, and let me actually make this a little bit taller on the Y. So there we go. So we got some rain. Woo! We love rain, uh, but. Uh, what if I was like, okay, but I want more rain. Well, uh, what we're going to do, uh, so you can duplicate this. I mean, you could uh, shift D the actual like mesh itself and do it, but uh, I like having it all, it's very clean to have it all in one geo node setup. So I'm just going to select everything up to our curve to mesh. I'm going to go shift P um, to put a frame around it. I'm also going to just rename that quickly to rain. Uh, and now I can just select everything in this frame. Get out of here, group input. Everything in this frame, shift D, and now I got another rain setup. And then I can even take a join geometry and plug that in and plug that in. So now I got two rain setups, but they're on top of each other. So on this uh, transform node again, or you could add another one, uh, I'm just going to go along the Y axis and then maybe I'll even scale it up a tiny bit. Add a couple more vertices. Uh, and then maybe I also want to change a seed value essentially because now these they're, they're the same so they're kind of stacked on top of each other so you can mess things like with the uh, on your actual noise texture the scale the detail you can mess with the value the random values or you can also add a divide and maybe change this to like one so that way the W seed value for the noise texture is always going to be one off from the top one uh, and you can do that several times you can replicate this as many times as you want you can add ones higher, lower, you can mess them all around. Um, but that's the gist of it. So the last couple of things we're going to do is now that we have this mesh, uh, it, it doesn't really matter a ton because they're already going to be moving quick and you can't see a bunch. But um, I also, but because I'm going to save so much not on my computer, not having to like procedurally rent or procedurally do stuff, but not having to render particle systems or physics or anything. Um, and I'm about to save a little more here, so if I switch resolution on these, the curve radius circle to like 3, you're not going to notice much of a difference. You don't really need that to be a, uh, a, a, a cylinder. So I might as well save those uh, polygons for whatever reason, especially if you already have a lot of this. Uh, it will help you in the end. Um, and then also, and again, not necessary, but it can help, especially with some more of the close-up rain if you're doing that. Um, if we grab a subdivide uh, surface, just put that there, and then also a set shade smooth, put that there as well. Um, and there we go. Uh, again, you don't necessarily need the subdivide surface. You can add some crease to it, whatever. Um, I'll maybe even add a little bit of that crease back. Um, but it helps a little bit. Um, and the last thing is we're going to do a set material, and I'm just going to choose the base default material. Um, so that is our rain, more or less. Um, the last couple of things we're going to do is I'm going to uh, go ahead and change this material. So I'm going to go to my material preview mode. I'm going to switch to my shader editor. 
Uh, I'm going to keep in the default material, but I'm going to name it rain. Uh, and also, since that was the material I had selected over here, yep, it changed it to rain in the geometry nodes. Uh, I'm going to find it. It's so far away, it does not want to be edited. Uh, and basically, the gist of this is I'm going to give it a shiny texture. I want it to look like water as best as I can, but I don't want to do anything super complex. So I'm going to switch this to like a pale blue, a little desaturated, nothing too fancy. Uh, roughness all the way down. Um, and then I kind of find you can have two options here. You can either make it metallic, so it's shiny, or you can add the transmission. I like transmission because it gives reflections, but also you can see through some stuff a bit. Um, that's just me. Uh, it'll probably do a little bit more of a hit to your computer, but again, we're saving so much on having to render particles. That might as well go for the one that might look a little bit nicer. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. And then we can rain. You can add more of these. You can mess with it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move a camera into position just so we can kind of see what this is looking like. Again, you kind of want it to fill your camera up. So let's say, let's say right there. Uh, and then let's even add a, uh, let's add a monkey. Let's add uh, Suzanne. Uh, so if I go GY, let's add her like right there, RZ. Let's make like contemplative or rotating there. There we go. Um, a contemplative monkey looking uh, through the rain. Um, but maybe I want some more uh, because maybe I'm going to take my camera, go to my camera settings, depth of field, and then I'll focus on Suzanne, our monkey here. Um, so now everything, all the rain's kind of in, like in the same depth of field. I'm even going to make this like two. Uh, and Suzanne in the back, who should still be getting rained on, uh, isn't. So uh, maybe I want to go ahead and duplicate this one or two more times, or even modify this second one to be a little further back, let's say like there. Uh, and then let's, if I duplicate all this rain again, Shift D, bring it down here. And then I can go ahead and bring uh, that rain up here. Again, join geometry. Oop. If it will let me join geometry, get up there. There we are. Uh, for my third rain, and I'm going to move this even farther back. Maybe right in front of Suzanne. And maybe this one, I'm also going to scale up a bit since it's more in camera. And maybe give it a little bit more of that. Maybe make the scale a little bigger. Detail and scale a little bit bigger. And then maybe I'll make this like three for the offset. Um, so that way, when we come back here and we click out of it, we get some varying uh, rain. You can see it's a little subtle, but we have the ones back here, and then we have the uh, more out of focus in one. So it gives the idea that rain is constantly coming down in a 3D environment. Um, and there we go. That's that's kind of our rain. Um, I'm gonna just you can render this in cycles, but again with all this light refactoring, EV works perfectly well. Um, and again, this is kind of like an overlay, so you could theoretically render this separately um, and then use it as an overlay on top if you couldn't find a nice rain overlay or you wanted something more stylized or a little more control over something. Um, or just render it as like a separate pass, essentially. Um, but I'm going to add an environment texture, go to my HDRIs. I'm going to choose, I think there's a marketplace one I have that's kind of nighttime-esque. Uh, where is it? Maybe not? Uh, I thought I did... I thought I was just using one. Uh, I'm spending too much time looking for... for one. Alright, well, we'll do... Somebody in the comments choose for me. Uh, because for some reason I can't make a uh, idea. Okay, we'll do this one. We'll give Vingoli Knight. That's now the choice. Thank you, comments, for, for making that choice for me. Um, but we'll go to Rendered. I will change this to, uh, Film. I don't want to see the background. You can also add ambient occlusion and bloom would be nice. Screen space reflection, since we have some reflection stuff. Motion blur, that won't really add much, because again, things aren't necessarily moving, they're just changing position. They just look like they're moving because of how we have it set up. Um, but that's that's it, that's the rain here. Even if I, yeah, even with that background of the HDRI, it looks like rain, and I can even, so we can focus more. Let me uh, turn down the viewport, uh, the passport display or whatever. There we go, we got rain. That is some blender, easy peasy, lemony, squeezy, uh, rain for you. Really quick, really fast to render, um, and, and and figure out fully procedural, so you can really mess with it, make as many of those rain kind of passes as you want, 
Um, you can tilt this, make it an angle, make a lot, make a little, do kind of drips, whatever you want. Um, but that's that's how to make some procedural rain in Blender. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions or things you'd like to see, uh, other video suggestions or things you want to know about, um, leave them in the comments below. Leave those ideas in the comments below. Um, also, if you like this tutorial, please do like this video. Uh, click that like button is what I mean. Um, and if you uh, want to see more tutorials like this or more uh, VFX videos, Blender stuff, um, or just know what's going on with me in this space, uh, hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date uh, with the latest things I put out. All right, well, that's pretty much it. Uh, I've been George. This has been a Blender tutorial, uh, and this has been G Makes, and I'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>